All right, so in this video, we are going to use Microwave Office to optimize the design of a lumped element bandpass filter. And this is the circuit that we're going to be optimizing. What I did is I started a new project, and within that project, a new schematic, and just built this circuit. Let's take a look at it. The left here, we have a 50 ohm port connected to an LC resonator, a series resonator with an L or an inductance of 110 nanohenry and a C or capacitance of 0.2 picofarad. It's then connected to an LC shunt resonator to ground with an L of 0.7275 nanohenry and a C of 34.9 picofarad and then another LC series resonator. These values for L and C are the same as the first resonator here on the left. So the inductance is 110 nanohenry and the capacitance is 0.2 picofarad and that's connected to our port two. So the way I actually got these values is I looked in the filter tables in Pozar's microwave engineering textbook to design a third order Chebyshev bandpass filter with a 0.5 dB ripple in the passband and a passband between 0.95 to 1.05 gigahertz. Once I got the actual values for L's and C's, I skewed them a bit. So perhaps, I don't remember, maybe the initial value or the correct value for this inductor is 112 nanohenry. All I did was just change it just a little bit down to 110 and I made those slight changes to all the other variables here. Um, this way we're close to the solution but not quite there and our goal is to use Microwave Office's optimizer feature to actually optimize these variables to get the response that we want. First thing we're going to do is actually simulate the response we have here. So let's go to options, project options. Make sure our global units, um, the frequency is at gigahertz first, and then actually set the frequencies that we want to simulate to 0 0.65 to 1.45 gigahertz, step size of 0 0.001. And let's start a new measurement. So we go here to graphs on the left, right click, new graph. We want it to be rectangular, so create. Here we right click, add new measurement. S11 and DB, hit apply. And then we want to plot S21 and DB, hit apply. And then up here we click on this lightning bolt analyze button. And here's our response. You can see that, well, first off, the pink curve is S21, so that's our insertion loss, and you can see that this is indeed acting as a bandpass filter with a center frequency around 1 gigs. It's not ideal, um, but it's close. It's close to what we want, but not quite there. We're going to use the optimization feature in the software to get the response we actually desire. So first thing we're going to do is make variables. So up here, click on this equation button, Let's make a variable L1 is equal to 110. And we're going to change this inductance to L1. You don't need to put units here because the units at nanohenry are right there. And we're going to constrain this problem. This inductance we know is going to be the same value as this first one, so it's called L1. Control or highlight it, Control C, Control V to copy paste. And let's make another variable L2, which will be this value, 0.7. 275 and then we can call this guy L2. Control C, Control V to copy and paste. Let's call this C1 and that's going to be this value here, 0 0.2 C1 and this other capacitor C1 as well. So now there's symmetry. Control C, Control V, copy paste. And this guy is going to be C2. So C2 is 34.9. And call this one C2. Okay, whenever I make a big change like that, I just re simulate, make sure I didn't make any mistakes, which are easy to make. Okay, so I didn't. Everything looks the same. That's good. Now, what we want to do is go up to View Variable Browser. And these are all the variables that are in the circuit. So, 
we're going to look for C1, C2, L1, so they're all right here, and we're going to click on Optimize. We're selecting these variables to be optimized. There are additional options, um, like con here's Constrain. So you can also constrain the variables um, to certain values, a lower value, an upper value, and a step size. We're not going to mess with that. We're just going to click on Optimize for C1, C2, L1, L2, like that. Okay, and the next thing we're going to do is actually add our optimizer goals. So to the left here, this optimizer goals folder thing, we right click and then click add optimizer goals. And then what comes up are the things that we just measured. So all the active measurements are right here. So S11 and S21 and DV. So let's select S11 and our goal, we want the return loss, or S11, to be less than negative 10 in the passband, negative 10 dB, that is. We don't set units because the units are just what the units are in the measurement, which are in dB. So our goal is negative 10. We want our measured S11, meaning the simulated S11 of our circuit, to be less than our goal. So make measured less than goal. Because if S11 was negative 12 dB, that's totally fine. We just don't want it to be greater than negative 10. And then the range is going to be the passband. So 0.95 gigahertz to 1.05 gigahertz. That's our passband. Let's hit OK. Now if we click up here in the graph, you'll see our goal visually displayed here. So this line is at negative 10. And it's blue. And it's saying we want this return loss to be less than this line right here. Interestingly, you can actually click on this and kind of, if you wanted to drag it over here or even expand it in real time, you can expand it like that, um, change it like that. But we just want our, we're not going to do that here. So let's actually go back and change it. Um, let's see. There we go. We changed it back. Make sure one more time. Nope, 1.05 gigs less than, it's not sloped or anything like that. Okay, good. That's our goal. Now we want to actually add another optimizer goal for S21. So let's click here, add optimizer goal, and then go S21. We want, we want S21, our insertion loss, to be greater than negative 0.5 dB. So we want our measurement to be greater than our goal. And again, the range is our passband. So point 9.5 to 1.05. Hit OK, and then on the graph it shows the goal visually displayed here. So this line is at negative 0.5 dB, and it's indicating we want this pink curve, this S21, to be greater than negative 0.5 dB. So now I think we're ready to optimize. To do that, we go to Tools, no, Options, nope, Simulate. There we go, Simulate, Optimize. And you want to choose your optimization method. Um, we're going to just choose random local, but I recommend you actually read the help menu and check out what all these different optimization methods do. For now, we'll just do random local. And you set your number of iterations. Potentially, the number, the, ma the what the maximum number of iterations is, is it it sets how many times this thing's going to simulate the circuit. So potentially, if this number is greater, it might take longer because it's going to be simulating more and more iterations, but you might actually get a better response. We'll leave that at 300. And I think we are ready, so let's hit Start. And it's going to be doing its thing. We click on the graph, and you can see what's happening. It's basically the program is changing the variables that we set to optimize and trying to get the response that we want. And it knows the response we want through the goals that we set. So it's working. It's sit here in anticipation and hope it finds something. And you can check on the status here. Oh, I think it just stopped. There. And you can see the response is it's meeting the goals that we wanted. Um, it stopped at iteration 92, so it simulated this thing 92 times. And that's a nice filter response. You can see it's even a third order Chebyshev filter. And then what you want to do is check out the values that um, 
the optimal values that it found for the variables that you set to optimize. So we set, remember, L1, L2, C1, and C2. And for this solution, it found L1 is 116.05 nanohenry. And if you remember before, we set L1 as 110 nanohenry. And you can see the other values have changed a bit. And this is the basics of how to use Microwave Office to optimize the design of a lumped element bandpass filter.